cats that are treated live longer than cats that are not treated. But I also mentioned it can be frustrating because it can be hard to predict. Not all cats will have a great response. Welcome back everyone. This is the third installment in my mini series of cat cliff notes where I'm trying to give you a nice overview of the basics that you need to know about cat lymphoma. If you missed the other two series, be sure to check out vlog number 97 and 98. We'll have links below where I give you a good overview of what lymphoma is, some of the risk factors, the things that can cause lymphoma. We talked about the difference between uh, low and high grade for intestinal lymphoma, and we talked about some of the other forms as well. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the prognosis and some of the prognostic factors. There will be a separate video that we will be talking about all the different chemotherapy options because there's more than one treatment option for cats with lymphoma. So you want to check out and don't forget to subscribe because that's how you know when that video, video has, has dropped or come out. Okay, let's break down. Let's talk about how we treat um, and the prognosis for cats with lymphoma. So the fifth thing that I want you to know about lymphoma in cats, and I mentioned it in the beginning, is this is a very treatable cancer. So cats that are treated live longer than cats that are not treated. But I also mentioned it can be frustrating because it can be hard to predict. Not all cats will have a great response. And you know, in dogs, 85% of dogs that get a multi-agent chemotherapy respond well, very high remission rates, and much easier to predict survival times. Cats tend to be a little bit harder to predict when we look at the high-grade lymphomas, the one that they're getting sicker quicker. So it can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, usually what I describe to pet owners is there's two subsets. The cats that respond well, that go into remission, are usually the long-term survivors. And there's a subset of kitties that don't respond well that can be very frustrating. And those are the kitties that were changing protocols or stopping treatment. So again, it is it highlights the importance of getting them into remission as we'll talk about in the last section which is the prognostic factors but it is a very treatable cancer i do think it's worthwhile to start treatment and see how they're doing because i have cats that do respond really well so jojo if you go back i'll put the link below it's a cat that I treated in 2010. Guys, it's currently 2019, and he relapsed about two and a half years later. He had the mediastinal form, which I warned the owners was not one of the good forms. We went through the CHOP multi-agent protocol. He relapsed two and a half years later in the abdominal form, went through another six months of chemo, and Jojo is now in Florida doing well you know, nine years later. So there will be, you know, cats that can be long-term survivors. Uh, I have Jackie who I treated for GI lymphoma and, you know, lived three years. So another way to see some of these stories is to go through the playlist and, you know, look for, you know, cats that I treated for lymphoma. But I do have a whole vlog on Jojo and Miku, who's a kitty that I treated for nasal lymphoma that's out six going on seven years with a combination of chemotherapy and radiation. So there are long-term survivors. If you decide against treatment, I definitely recommend prednisolone, a steroid, but you wanna get all the information and make an educated decision. Again, in the next vlog, I'm gonna go through the different chemotherapy protocol options that they are, but again, I want you to know it's a treatable cancer. Uh, cats tolerate chemo very well, and I would treat my own cat, and I have. Finally, the sixth thing that we're going to talk about is what is prognostic or predictive for cats with lymphoma. And you know, when I was studying for boards, I had a list of all these things, especially you know, common cancers like dog lymphoma and cat lymphoma. But I always try to break it down for pet owners and for you, you know, what are the more important predictors? And when I'm standing in the room with her with a client and a family, I do the same thing. So 
there's lists of things that I could go through, but I think that the most important predictors for cat lymphoma are, are these. So being feline leukemia negative, cats that are feline leukemia negative do better than cats that have the virus that are positive. So we know that if you have the virus, you're not going to respond as well to chemotherapy. Usually that response is much more short lived. Um, so I do still have some owners that elect to treat anyway, uh, and the cat will, you know, can do well for a couple of months, but they don't usually have the good long-term survival that the responders that are negative do. So again, being feline leukemia positive is a negative predictor. It's a lot of words in one sentence. Okay, the second um, prognostic factor is location. So some locations carry a better prognosis than others. So I mentioned that the nasal location, cats with nasal lymphoma tend to do better than the liver location or the spinal cord location. With that said, I can always prove a case where I had a a kidney, a cat with kidney lymphoma do better than a nasal case. So nothing is a hard set rule and I don't want you to say, well, she said, you know, my cat has that form, I'm not going to treat. I just want you to know statistically, but your cat is not a statistic, just want you to have the information. So location is much more important than the staging system. If you happen to watch my videos on mammary cancer in dogs and cats, we did talk about the WHO, the World Health staging system. I didn't mention it in cats. In dogs, we talk a little about the staging system. It's just not that important. So the FELV status and the anatomic location is much more important. I'll come back to the GI location for cats because it's a little bit confusing. Cats that are sick at, at diagnosis from their cancer don't do as well as cats that are asymptomatic for their cancer. So if your cat is losing weight, vomiting, diarrhea, you know, with gastrointestinal lymphoma is not gonna do as well as a cat that's showing minimal signs with their nasal lymphoma. So again, cats that are sick from their cancer, and this is true for dogs with lymphoma as well, we call that substage B, but animals that are sick from their cancer, that has been shown to be, a, you know, from study to study to study, to be a negative prognostic factor. The last one is the protocol that you choose. So we know that cats that get treated with a multi-agent protocol, usually, and we'll talk about this in the next one, a CHOP or a COP chemotherapy protocol, do better than if they get a single agent protocol like Lomustine, and that they do that is better than just steroids alone, which is better than no therapy at all. So again, that has been shown to be prognostic. And the other thing that has been, and I mentioned this before, is cats that go into a complete remission on their protocol tend to live longer than cats that just have a partial response or stable disease. But so cats where their lymphoma, so if they had a mass in their GI tract or big lymph nodes in their abdomen, that all returns to normal on their chemotherapy protocol and then stays in remission on their chemotherapy and then afterwards. So getting cats into a complete remission, which often means I'm doing like an ultrasound because remember I can't measure their lymph nodes the way I can dog lymphoma so usually halfway through their chemo protocol we're going to be doing an ultrasound but I'm also monitoring their weight did their vomiting resolve did their diarrhea resolve all those other things are going to be pieces of the puzzle that we're going to use to assess whether or not the cat is in remission because again that complete remission is so important for cats and their prognosis before we wrap up, I do need to talk a couple of seconds about GI lymphoma because, you know, we talked about for cats with high-grade lymphoma that go into a complete remission and get a multi-agent chemotherapy protocol that um, there's these two subsets, the cats that respond and do better, and then the subset of kitties that don't respond that are going to be our short-term, you know, survivors. So the cats that usually get no treatments, usually about a month um, with steroids, maybe, you know, two to three months. Um, the responders on a multi-agent chemotherapy protocol for high-grade GI lymphoma, usually about a year, um, you know, sometimes we'll see about 25% are alive at two years. So again, getting in that complete remission is so important for cats. But again, there's still a subset of kitties that are non-responders and may only live a couple of months, uh, even on a multi-agent protocol. And those are the ones that we're stopping or changing protocols because they're not achieving the complete remission. 
For cats with low-grade lymphoma, again, the slowly developing one, those are usually treated with different types of protocols like steroids and chlorambicil, which is leucoran. Uh, usually their remission is defined as resolution of signs, so vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, all of those improve. And those kitties, usually about you know a year and a half to two years, um, some studies say about 75 to 80% of those cats are alive at one and a half to two years. So they do much better than the cats. Again, just highlighting what differences that there are between cats with low grade and high grade lymphoma for sure. Well, that wraps up my mini series on cat lymphoma. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched all three videos, you got the top six things that I want you to know about cat lymphoma. As I mentioned, there will be a separate video where I'm gonna dive deep and talk to you about the best chemotherapy options, whether you wanna do a multi-agent chemotherapy option or you're looking for something a little less intense that requires you know, less expense and less visits to your veterinarian or your oncologist. So be sure to subscribe so you know when that video comes out. Did I forget anything? Do you have any additional questions about cat with lymphoma? Please comment. Remember, I can't make specific recommendations about your cat, but I'm really here to help. I know it's overwhelming. I'm sorry that you're here, but I hope that you found this information helpful. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video about the different chemotherapy treatment options for cats.